away from taking down the prize pool. This is going to be such a cool game on Delta Quadrant. And you have to give a lot of credit to Nama in this series. He came out with a brilliant strategy in the first two games. And how does Nama lose? Apparently only if you are an endurance machine. Nama has been impenetrable to any sort of cheesy, gimmicky garbage in the outset of the game. He does Banshee harass. He gets so many tanks and bunkers up and has a brilliant late game and mana. Seems to be able to thwart it, but this last map on Delta Quadrant is going to be very tough. And we might actually see some very early aggression on this map going into this because of the short rush distances between all bases. This is like a four player step to wall. The distances are so close together and it'll be exciting to see how both players use this to the full potential. Now, before we go into this final match, big shout out to Steel Series for helping to sponsor this land tournament and the 205,000 kroner prize pool. Big shout out to the crowd for making it out tonight. Big shout out to the online viewers, everyone tuning in at home. The action is tense and we are starting game <laughs> five of the grand finals of Nama against Mana. Let us begin with the cheers to Apollo. If you would like Nama to win this series, to close it out 3-2, give a cheer for the Terran player, Nama! And if you would like Mana to continue this wreckage, this train wreck with his Protoss, please make some noise! And in the bottom right, we have Mana down zero, or was down zero two at the start of the tournament, coming back two to two, bringing it to a deciding fifth set. Nama, we saw nerves get to him in his match against Top. Will they get to him now? He started off with such a huge lead. It can be mentally devastating to lose two incredibly long games in a row. And I wonder how both players are gonna go into this game. So far, so standard, there's nothing cheesy come out. Sometimes players like to just get that easy win just to win the final, but no, both players are going to be standard and we're going to have to see how this game will develop and I just pray that we can see another epic game. And meanwhile, Nama in the top left as the Red Terran in cross map positions against Mana, who is the blue Protoss. Mana looks like he is again playing very calmly, nothing cheesy coming out of both players. Absolutely excellent play by both of them knowing that there's no need to cheese, no need to do any sort of gimmicky goofiness. If they can play long games like they've played before, no reason to change now. After those first two games, I could have never, never have dreamed us to be sat here right now with going into this fifth game, and I never would have thought we'd have seen those two epic games. They were fantastic showing of Terran versus Protoss, and it's gonna really educate all the viewers today. Please take something away from Mama and also from Mana take away from these two <laughs> players whose names are anagrams of each other making it very hard to cast but of course very fun to watch looks like on delta quadrant same things that we've talked about before apply as well with this huge back area banshees love just camping out in this back corner we've seen mana is relatively banshee proof but really nama is going to be delighted that on this map the distances are very close the spaces are very narrow on this map tanks are beastly units. And I quite like the wall. It's a little bit of a different wall compared to previous games. Usually he likes to wall off against the back wall, but now he's, he's walling off so that he can defend the minerals a lot better. And every unit, any Hellions or Reapers that come in will have to go around the structures. Very nice play. And over in the base of Nama, we are seeing a factory first before refinery, and we, are, we haven't even seen a tech lab being put down. And it looks like a standard play for Mana in every game is to lose a scout probe. Oh, the fans of Nama rejoice at the death of that probe. <laughs> the probe does die. Second refinery been put down here in the base of Nama. What do we see over here? We've seen a chrono boosted sentry coming out, actually. Looks like he wants to get that sentry up very quickly. Still nothing noteworthy coming out of Mana's base, just getting those very early structures. Meanwhile, Nama getting his factory and his second refinery. What will their openings be? Will Nama re rely again on that crutch tank unit, or will he do a big marine marauder play as we saw in the last game? It looks like he is waiting. He is going to put down a starport, and the last couple of games he's been laying off the banshees quite a bit, yeah, and yeah. he might actually go straight back into using them heavily again. 
knowing that Mana has not been getting that many observes. He kind of doesn't expect it anymore, and that could be quite a devastating blow for him. Mana playing it safe, getting the second gateway, and then a robotics facility relatively fast. Observers are going to have a lot of gateway units. And Hellion is being produced out of the factory, actually. Um, along with this, and are we going to see a Tetla being added to the starport? The factory's been lifted up. It's kind of interesting, and we are seeing a tech lab put down onto the starport. Looks like Banshees will be coming up eventually. Meanwhile, Nama is just pulling back safely with this factory and barracks. Now note that on this map, there is a front expansion. Very easy to take, but very hard to defend because these positions are so close. The Hellion's actually going to run into the main. Oh my goodness, this would be a very, very bad way to start this match. Uh, and he sees the third gateway bit for town. You see if he can get any blows on these, though. One shot goes down, two. Will he be able to get any pro kills, though? One more shot. Will he get one goes down? He's going to try and get another uh -oh, two go down. One down. Trying to surround, it. but this Hellion has not gotten that many kills. Three kills down. If he can get a few more, that would be great. But no, just three kills. But most importantly, he got the necessary information to see what was happening. There's the Observer just now coming out, and Cloak and Banshee incoming from Nama. Yes, the Banshee is on its way out, and we have a reactor on the barracks now is nice and the banshee is going to come though will he be able to get down and do any damage to the mineral line the observer is going to be waypointed straight towards the base if he does go on a path that doesn't cross the observer he will be okay but a second observer is being chrono boosted out as well mana is so careful against this banshee harassment and nama that is a very intimidating sign coming out of him to see that he is doing his strongest build his trademark cloak banshees into marine tank not going to salvage that bunker going to keep that up all game long these units are busy working away at that destructible debris and one banshee is already making its way into mana's main there is an observer in place with two stalkers though so it won't be really able to do much damage he might try to get a cloak and he, maybe he can pick up a couple while tanking a bit of damage, but here he comes in with this Banshee. Will he be able to do anything, though? Where's the Observer? Oh, no, there's no Observer. Oh, no, there is definitely an Observer somewhere nearby. I have no idea where it is. Tried to make a box to find it, but it is just as hidden from his opponent as it is from me. There it is. And this is very interesting. Mana might be uh, gearing up to expand to his gold as his first base. Mm, that, would be ex that would be actually quite interesting if he does that. Uh, that's actually really nice, especially if he goes for this tank play, because he's going to be forced into sitting back for quite a bit while he gets the tanks out. His tanks on. He is actually building them too. He does, and the stalkers are coming down to help to get rid of these destructible debris. If he goes down there, that's going to be really intriguing. Looks like more observers coming out from Mana, and wow, really, this is an incredibly clever play from Mana. He knows that most of the expansions are hard to take on this map, so why not just go for the gold first? I do think that not only would Nama not expect that, but even if he did, it would be hard to bust. It's extremely hard to bust because of we were talking about how small this map is. The gold isn't actually that far away from the natural anyway, and it's not like it's super far away for him to go defend. So this is going to be really, really good for him going into the mid game. Looks like Mana is now heading up to the top right position, wants to try to pinch off any scouting units, in particular any scouting Banshees. And Nama, oh, very clever. He is moving out with a bunch of Banshees. He's just going to try to kill these Stalkers off. Two Banshees are coming in from the back. Only two Stalkers here. A third one is on the ramp. A couple of sentries, but see if he can do any damage. Oh, here comes a third one, actually. He comes in. Will he be able to do any damage? Comes in around the back of the mineral line, waiting for three. All three are cloaked. They might go straight for these Stalkers. And there it is. Three of them target firing. One of them does fall. He is warping in more Stalkers as we speak. And oh, Nama might do huge damage here. And here he is. He's going to go for that final Stalker. He's going to turn around. And none of these Banshees are going to die. All in orange health, but he has to be careful. Four Stalkers are coming in. Will he lose any, though? He and might be able to snipe a couple. Oh, and there's the target fire on the Immortal. Wants to kill it. Will he get it? He loses one Banshee. He loses two Banshees. Ah, a little bit greedy there, trying to snipe that. Unfortunately, loses both Banshees. Nice defense there with the Stalkers by Mana. And the expansion now has finally gone down for Nama, but... The gold expansion is up and running. Probes are being transferred as I speak. And it looks like this one Banshee is just going to, as usual, be the annoying reminder that you cannot attack in Mana's position. In the meantime, gold expo is up, but it is still a very, very precarious position for Mana. As this expansion is up by Nama, everything is exactly as Terran wants it. 
and he really does need to scout out where the second base of the Protoss is. I mean, he knows that the destructible debris is still on the back expansion. And look at this SCV actually moving up here to check for any hidden expansion. With the probe, I mean, this Banshee is doing a couple of hits to the probe. This SCV, though, will it go past the goal? That's what I really want to know. Yeah, it looks like mana. I haven't taken any extra gas geysers yet. It's just sprinting to get that essential zealot with leg speed and oh, Templar Archives mix. And he is going to go walk. We look at the SCV, the green light coming out of its eyes, shooting straight down to that goal. Even the scan. Oh, and he knows wow. And this might actually trigger some kind of push in the next couple of minutes. It's like the infamous double scout scanning and then sending the SCV. He can't believe his eyes. Extremely fast gold expo. There's the Zealot popping out right now. Nama going again for this obnoxious harassment, but does Mana have enough? No, he doesn't have anything there to defend against this. And here he is. He looks like he's pushing out and not worth engaging into this Terran army on Siege. He's going to salvage both bunkers. And here is the push that has been triggered by taking that gold. SCVs, are there any SCVs coming? No, there aren't any SCVs to build bunkers this time, but he's going to try and set up position on the upper ground and slowly advance down. Zell with leg speed is not yet done. He is trying to inch around to the north side. Nama, again, so well known for these meticulous slow pushes. Mana cuts oh. them in half. Oh, getting almost all of those units ripping through. But there are still a lot of siege tanks behind. So Nama is looking very intimidating. All his production facilities are waypointed all the way to this ramp. And he's going to move ever closer. Um, and there is, again, some nice force field. Zealots with leg speed up. He's trying to dart up with the Immortals, but another Immortal in the backside, just as in game one. He has to retreat all the units of Nama pushing forth, but no stim, so Mana has a few more seconds of time. And he might be able to unsiege and get even closer. Stim is not that far away from finishing, neither is the combat shield. A bunker being put down, and Mana needs to stay calm like he did in the previous games, as this is putting him under a lot of pressure. He's having to pull all his pros. Will he be able to get them, though? Oh no, the probe's taking some serious tank fire. Mana knows the game is not done yet. He is losing his gold expansion, but Nama still pressing hard. Pressing very hard. This gold expo is going to go down, forcing Nana to put this expo on his main, I mean, on his natural. And is this, all oh, the tanks going to unseach? He might try to look to continue this aggression and push even further into the proto space. Looks like Nama's doing the smart thing, pulling back along his reinforced route, going to gather everything back together and go for the straight front push. Now all of those Templar do have enough energy for the storm. Five gateways out for mana. Everything rests on this next push, and it looks like Nama is moving in. And here he is. He does scan and sees that the Nexus is not quite complete. Will these storms be able to hold it off? He's going to be moving in. Tanks slowly moving forward. He's trying to bait these units in, taking a couple of hits. And oh, there's a, a big nice storm. storm. Does a lot of damage, and Mana realizes that all the tanks are in the way. Mana now morphing in some high Templar, and there's another great storm. And all these units are going down slowly, but these two tanks edging a little bit closer, leapfrogging everyone closer and closer. Scan sees exactly how many units he has, but he doesn't really have that much energy on his high Templar anymore, and he only has one. This is an amazing push by Nama. Again, so slow, so methodical, just reinforcing, dumping everything into this push. This expansion is really vulnerable. Mana looks like he is just going to sacrifice it. Might just re-expand to his back door base. The amulet upgrade is done, and look at how patient Nama is. Not going to dart forward, trying to surround himself with bunkers. Yeah, that's the best thing for him to do, is to try and expand towards the back. But it looks like he might be trying to break this now. This might be too soon. And I think he realizes that there's a lot of bunkers and a lot of tanks. And he's trying to save this Nexus, but it's so close to dying. And oh, there it is, down to a quarter health. Mana just does not want to push forward. Nama does get a storm off, but Mana is taking a little bit too much damage. And three Marauders are going to take this Nexus down, and he knows it, and it goes down. And that is really, really big for Nama, and he's going to have the fourth Mana to try to expend at the back. And it looks like Nama is being relentless, just continuing to push, spending every scan, not getting any mules at all. Mana has a large force, but this is an increasingly huge army. There's the sensor tower. No extra command centers anywhere for Nama, just devoting everything into this push. Everything is in the push, and he's getting units up the ramp now, sniping off, well, not really, just doing a little bit of damage, but he's going to edge even closer with his tanks. He will try to set them under this ledge, and then try to move into the base with all his ground units. Trying to chrono boost all of these warp gates is almost out of money. 
Everything rests on Mana's ability to break this push. There are siege tanks just wailing on everything. There's Mana giving the big happy face. He's going to go for it, sending in everything. He has Templar, but look at the tank count of Nama. Mana storming everything he can. The Immortal in the back again. Another storm. Nama ripping through this force. And it looks like, will Mana be able to break it? I don't think he will be able to break it, Day 9. Always you is all going down. And, and GG is gold! <laughs>
playing the stunning tournament from the BYOC, earning himself a one gigabyte hard drive from Sapphire motherboard and CPU. Thanks to Sapphire for helping provide the great prize. And a big thanks to Mana for providing the amazing show. And of course, our grand champion, 100,000 kroner going to Nama. He will win himself more swag than he knows what to do with. The ISO monitor, the Sapphire graphics, motherboard, and CPU. Let's give a round of applause to all our players who came out today to make the show great. And there he is, the DreamHack Steel Series 2010 champion. Oh, <laughs> knocking the hat off his trophy. What an amazing an event, an amazing prize pool. Big thanks to Steel Series. There will be a raffle for great Steel Series prizes after this show. So, again, enormous congratulations. There's, there's no candy in the trophy, it's just a regular trophy although that would be a good improvement to the tournament. So I'd like to give a big shout out to the amazing co-caster, Apollo, up in the main area. <laughs> Helping bring this English commentary. Big thanks to our German Swedish casters. Big thanks to everyone who came out today. Big thanks to everyone who tuned in online. That will wrap up the event. I am Day 9. Thank you for coming out. Please be seated, everyone, because we have Steel Series products that some of you want, probably. And Sapphire. And ASO. Anyone want one of those products? Of course you do. Well, who wants Sapphire stuff? <laughs> okay. We have this little game to see who's going to receive those things. First off, I want you to scream our sponsors' names. And we'll have a look out for who looks like they're hungering for most stuff, OK? <laughs> so first, I want you to scream, Steel Serious! <laughs> OK, okay once more, Steel Serious! You in the black shirt. With Green. <laughs> Come up on stage. Stop on stage. Uh, Dan, let's see. I want you to scream, Stop Fire! Stop Fire! Stick it on, stick it on. Hey, you there. You, yeah. Come up on stage. Come on, okay. Uh, can we have another? Aso. Aso. Yes, 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 yes. Uh...